Well, investigators in Houston, Texas, continue their efforts to determine the motive of the shooter behind Sunday's church attack that injured two people, including the suspect's seven-year-old son. And it ended with the death of the shooter by law enforcement officers. Now, Houston police have documented a history of mental health issues and a lengthy criminal history for the suspect that they've identified as a woman named Genesis uh, Moreno. Uh, now, she was from El Salvador. There has been no discussion of whether or not she was in the U.S. legally. She used a rifle uh, that she reportedly purchased legally. Now, how she did that with a record of mental illness is a big question mark. The rifle had Palestine, a sticker on the butt of the uh, stock, and Houston police under, uncovered her anti-Semitic writings uh, as well. Now, reports also indicate she used multiple aliases, including the male named Jeffrey. While there are many details we do not know, we do know that both mental health crises and attacks on churches continue to rise. And there is a convergence of transgenderism, drug treatments, and violence. I'm joined now by Dr. Jennifer Bowens, director of the Center for Family Studies here at the Family Research Council. Prior to her work at FRC, Dr. Bowens worked as a clinician and researcher addressing the effects of psychological trauma. As a researcher, she studied the effects of mass traumatic events like 9-11. Dr. Bowens, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks for having me, Tony. All right. So there's a lot of unknowns here. Right. Right. So, and, but we're we're having a difficult time getting the information because the, the, there appears to be some reluctance on behalf of authorities to give out information. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're piecing this together based upon what we're hearing. So we're, we're kind of talking in generalities here, but prompting, hopefully, prompting officials to dig a little deeper because there could be some very important underlying facts here that could have implications for the safety of a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, you have to remember, this is on the heels of us passing um, community school bills and all kinds of bills about school shootings and so forth. And um, and we did that with, you know, trying to throw all these different ideas and, and legislation at a problem that actually has a really deeper root. And it's time that we really look at that root um, and we're not doing that, right. Tony. We're not. We're not addressing the root issues here. Now, mental illness yes. is an issue. Absolutely, this is a mental illness issue, with with shootings across the board. Right. So historically, we would see men who um, are school shooting or school shooters. Well, or, or mass shootings. Period. Has right. up until recently was almost exclusively men. Right. But something's changed. Something's changed, and it's been in conjunction with the rise of transgenderism. Um, and of course, we know with this population, they already have a lot of, of mental health issues, right? They have a lot of adverse childhood events. Um, trauma. Trauma. Right. They have trauma. So, and we also know that they're at risk for suicide. Right. So with trauma also sometimes comes anger? Absolutely. It comes anger and also comes a susceptibility to suicidal ideation or committing suicide, which you just take that a step further. I mean, if you're able, if it's not saying that everyone who has a suicidal ideation is going to commit uh, right. mass murder, but you're committing murder, you're committing murder right. of yourself. So you're already in a position that's not, it's not good. Th that's you're, what we... Again, we have not gotten all the information from the shooting at Covenant School in Nashville, but right. what has leaked out uh, suggests that transgender f female, that female who you know acted as a male, that she was wanting to commit suicide. Right, and and so this is an alarming trend that we're seeing these young women who don't fit the profile, right. that we're seeing them commit these heinous acts. And a good researcher would say, what is going on here? Right. And why is it that there, these women are also connected in some way to the transgender ideology? So, so, so let me unpack that for just a little bit, because I think it's important when we, we talk about transgender. We're not talking about 
um, in some cases just identifying as a male. But they're, one of the things we've been working on in these SAFE acts in states across the country is this experimental use of drugs and surgery. So if you're a female and you are wanting to identify as a male, you take male hormones. Right. And if you have an underlying mental illness, what, what does, it, this is like a, a concoction that is just so volatile and dangerous. Yes, and this is, this is one of the root issues that we need to look at because um, the hormones aren't taking care of what already is a pre-existing mental health issue. So if you take someone who has great mental health and then you pump them with higher levels of male or female hormones, I mean, how can you expect a good outcome? I mean, that's not rocket not science. It's not normal. And so not only, let's just take a, a woman and you pump her full of testosterone. Um, first of all, now she's, she's having to socially adjust to the fact that her body is changing to look more like a male. So that's introducing all kinds of other mental health issues, the possibility of greater levels of bullying, et cetera. But then you have all these new emotions to deal with, rage, um, you know, a sexual drive that wasn't there before. Now all of a sudden you're, that woman is having to deal with these emotions and you have a mental health community that's surrounding her saying, you know, this is, this is great. This is the answer to all your problems. Well, reports, again, not from the police, but reports from neighbors who have described the behavior of this woman. It was very aggressive. Um, you know, she had weapons. She threatened people with those weapons. Uh, she tried to run over people with their car, I mean, with her car. I mean, she was very aggressive. Yeah, and you have to wonder, was there more going on than just her baseline mental health distress? And so if you're yeah. looking at public policy, isn't this information you need to know when we're looking at this transgender craze and that there are societal implications for what we are doing, especially when it starts with children in schools? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think we also have to recognize that we as a so American society and as a psychological profession are so quick to throw drugs at every problem and so I believe that part of what gave rise to using hormones to deal with gender distress or whatever, you know, however you want to call it, um, is from this, from the desire to fix something with a pill, to have a quick right. fix rather than to actually deal with those underlying issues, which we're, we're clearly seeing a baseline with so many of these um, shooting incidents. There's already mental health distress, and now, now you're going to throw... Um, the wild uh, card of hormones into the mix of this, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. So, Dr. Bowens, in how many other situations where someone is struggling with something, do we, do we, do we ignore the underlying mental health issues? I think we do it, in, uh, unfortunately, in a lot of areas. I mean, I think when it comes to even psychological drugs, psychotropic drugs, those are supposed to be the last resort. Instead, I think if you go to um, some of your physicians, they'll, that'll be the first thing they do is prescribe you something. And I, I know some people that listen to us might totally disagree with me, but I think the point here is that we actually start as a society, we start dealing with the real internal struggles that we're facing and not just try to medicate everything that we're, we're dealing with. And, and one other thing I would say with that is one thing that's given rise to all of these trans, um, I think some of the trans shootings is a backdrop that looks at um, the world through the minority stress theory, which basically says if you are a minority, then you are an oppressed person. And so when you have people like what we've been reporting on, on all these different um, shootings, they're already struggling. And so you have a, a society or schools and psychologists who are saying, you know, you're this way because you're a minority and you're, um, you're a gender minority then that just latches on to the person who already feels victimized. 
they're al- they're already feeling a victim because maybe they've been through trauma. Right. So then you have this framework that says, you know, you are a victim, and and there are these other people, Christians, others who believe that sex is binary, and therefore. Um, they are keeping this vital treatment from you. So you can see just how some of this, the circumstances in our society have set up the belief system that Christians are the problem. And, and we're, we're going to actually be looking at it later this week uh, with our hostility toward the, the churches, that uh, report that's going to be coming out that shows uh, it's, it's more than doubled in terms of the attacks on, on churches. So I want to go back to your point about how uh, we medicate. Yeah. Uh, so we basically suppress, kick the can down the road, do not deal with the underlying issue. Mm-hmm. At some point, though, at some point that manifests. Yeah. It. How could it not? Right. You can't numb yourself out to the point where things... Uh, well, things will eventually manifest. It will come out in a different relationship. It'll come out in a work setting, etc. So we we're trying to um, take the easy way out because we don't, as especially as Americans, we don't like pain. Um, there's a, a book called I think it's Dopamine Nation, and it talks about how as Americans we've blown out our dopamine systems with all the drugs that we use every time we experience pain, and then. We actually, as Americans, um, compared to other countries, we actually report higher levels of pain. Right. And so we have to learn how to, with God, go through pain courageously, because you can only go through pain with him if you're going to do it successfully. But you got to deal with it. you, you got to confront it. it. You have to confront these underlying issues, oftentimes, as you point out, trauma. And, and I hate to say it, just based on experience and counseling and law enforcement, a lot of children face trauma yeah. and experience that trauma. Um, and sometimes they, they don't, their parents may not, un, may not discover it, may not know about it. And then it manifests itself in a certain behavior and the parents then deal with the symptom, but not the source. So speak to that in just a couple of minutes we've got left about, you know, what parents, grandparents need to be looking for and how they can get real help. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I will say this. So many of the things that we try to do in the policy space to deal with uh, homelessness and delinquency and all of these things, it's actually, if we would deal with the trauma, um, a lot of these issues would go away. Um, they would resolve themselves, but but we don't do that. And and I would say that one of the most important things you can do um, is to face it. As actually, one of the treatments for trauma is actually they call it an exposure, and you. You are, it's horrible, but (laughs) because nobody wants to face what they went through, but it's just one example of the fact that we can avoid, people avoid it through drinking and they avoid uh, traumas through different means. But when we actually are able to courageously face it, maybe that we have help with somebody else, then those symptoms typically disappear. And that's, um, I think that's a good admonition for life is um, to, to face off with the things because they will continue to be in the background of our existence until we actually face it and go through it and get to the other side. But you do get to the other side. That's the good right. news. And, and I think we don't have time to unpack this, but when you, and we're going to have to have this conversation at a later date, but when you look at Scripture, you read the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, there are folks that had a lot of issues. Yeah. But... Yeah they were able to work through them. God was able, in many cases, they were, some refused to, to deal with it, but those who did, the, the Lord was able to see them through. Yeah, look at the life of David. Yeah. I mean, he messed up terribly. He caused, he caused trauma to other people. He had trauma in his, his life with his own son, but, but look at his legacy. I mean, son of David. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right, we're a fallen man and... and, and, and Fallen people do things to other people as well, but God is able to to help us. It doesn't eradicate and remove all of that, but helps us through those things. 
Yeah. yeah, and the hope is that we, every day, we are becoming like right. him as right. he is, so are we in this world. Dr. Bowen's always great to see you. You too.